I want to show you in this tutorial how you can quickly build a set with content purchase from multitracks.com. Using tracks in Ableton Live does not have to take forever and you don't have to sacrifice freedom and flexibility. So let's dive in and get started. So up front, I'm gonna let you know, I'm gonna be using content that I've purchased from multitracks.com. Uh, that is content that's used for folks using tracks on stage for church uh, worship, kind of a church context. So if that's your, not your context, feel free to watch this video, but I would actually suggest that you watch my video where I show you how to build an Ableton Live set in less than five minutes, because that's kind of general audience. This video is gonna be directed directly towards worship leaders, to show you how quickly you can build a set in Ableton Live um, using content from multitracks.com. And the key to making this happen and doing it quickly is I pre-formatted all my songs. Now, I just went through a video where uh, I spent about uh, an hour and 10 minutes uh, formatting all these songs, really slowly taking my time, kind of talking through it. Uh, I even made some mistakes, but I did kind of an over my shoulder look for uh, from studio to stage student. So if you're interested in that and you wanna see me in real time format songs, then build a set and talk Talk through it, uh, then head to from studio to stage.com slash worship. And uh, you could check out that content plus all the other courses that I have available there. But okay, let's dive in, let's get started. So I've got Ableton Live open. I've got my multi-tracks uh, template built out that I've already created. Uh, and I'm gonna start just by dragging some songs in. So let's go to this song here, Battle Belongs. Uh, we're gonna drag this into our set. We're gonna wait for it to load. And the beauty of doing this um, is if you format everything exactly the same way, then uh, it takes you know little to no time to build a set to drag everything in. So um, you're just gonna kind of watch me in real time build this set. And again, uh, I worked through and already added and formatted all my songs earlier, which is, which is great. Uh, and you can check that out again from studiotostage.com slash worship if you wanna see that. Okay, so uh, let's, we've got some time signature changes in here. I've used this song before. Um, so I'm gonna re-add these guys in. Okay, and let's jump to here. Insert time signature changes to four, four, four. Oops, let's add one more time signature change here. This honestly, to me, is like the worst part is just having to add time signature changes in, but um, it's, it's not too bad at all. It doesn't take too much time at all. Okay, so there's song one. Let's go to song two. Uh, now, first thing I'm gonna do, and you can see when I added those in, I got some time back. Uh, let's go to song two here. I'm gonna choose this homecoming song. I'm gonna make this uh, the song I use. And actually, I did like a shorter version of this, a little edit of this that I showed in that walkthrough. I know this song is in 6.8, so I'm gonna go ahead and set the time signature for this to be 6.8. So let's drag this into our set. We'll drop this in, okay. It's gonna take just a second to load. And let's scroll up. You can see some of the edits I made there. Not the cleanest edits, but it, it works, okay. We're gonna go all the way back to the beginning here. We're gonna cut this. Press two, we'll paste this, cut, go up here, press two, paste, okay? You can see it just drops right in. That's because I formatted everything the, the same way using this template, which is great. Uh, let's press three, let's get song three in here. Song three is in four, four. So we're gonna drop three in. We're gonna set this right on a downbeat. So right there. Uh, we wanna go back to four, four, all right? So I'll type four, four in there. Now let's go to song four, okay, or song three, excuse me, I'm losing my mind. This is what happens after you record videos and spend hours doing that all day. Okay, let's drop this guy in. Let's go find it. It's all the way at the beginning. A lot of people get freaked out by that because it doesn't drop right into place. I wish it did, but man, it's not that big of a deal. We'll paste, we'll shift, we'll cut, we'll go up here, click in the right track, paste, and it drops right in. Okay, the final one is actually just uh, the one of the same songs I did before, Homecoming. Uh, and I'll put a link in um, in the description of the video to all the songs I used in the video so you could go purchase them over at Multitracks if you wanna follow along. Um, I'm using a custom mix version of uh, Homecoming. So it's the same song that's previously in the set, but I wanted to show how to do a custom mix, but I know it's in 6.8, so I'm gonna add time signature 6.8 there. And let's go back up here to custom mix project. And we'll drop this in. And then we just have a, uh, just a little bit more work to do. We don't have much more. So I'm gonna close my finder now. <clears throat> I don't need that anymore. We're gonna select this song, boom. Gonna cut it, okay, press four. We'll paste it. And then we'll get just this top bit here. <clears throat> four, 
we'll paste. Okay. Then we'll delete that. Okay, so there's my four songs. Next, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna delete these extra locators. I just don't need these, so we'll delete those. We'll hit save. Give it just a second to save. Okay, there we go. Um, so now let's uh, let's add our extra locators. Now, if I was using my advanced tracks template, uh, I could have Ableton Live automatically add these for me. But for now, I'm just gonna go up here, assign A to my add locator button. And then what I'm gonna do is click on each one of these markers and I'm going to uh, press A. That's gonna add a locator for me. So this is gonna take just a second. Again, if you wanted to do this automatically, you could check out my advanced tracks template. Uh, I'll add that in the description that you could purchase or get from free, uh, for free as a From Studio to Stage subscriber. Um, <clears throat> but I'm gonna actually just add these locators in now, just like this. Um, it doesn't take long at all. Again, I think this video is at five minutes. I think I've been working for about four and a half or so. So I could build my entire set in, uh, in about four minutes if I wanted. Um, four to five minutes. Okay, let's get that added in. And then our last one there. Okay. Uh, and then I think what I have two more songs to do. <clears throat> and then we're, we're almost done. Okay, so A. So all I'm doing is just clicking on this markers track, uh, pressing A, which is nice. Uh, the markers track saves me a lot of time, particularly when I'm adding locators. And because my locators don't come between sets, which again, I know is a bummer. I wish Ableton would, would change that uh, for us. But because they don't come with our set, uh, adding the markers track to me is, is kind of essential. It, it's an essential thing that uh, allows me to see my song sections to then add locators back in and um, to have freedom and flexibility really simply. Uh, in fact, I just did a video this week um, uh, or will be coming out this week as you watch this. I don't think it'll be out quite yet, where I show how to use your MIDI controller to navigate locators and stuff. Uh, I'll put a link in the description of that. It may not be out uh, while you're watching this, but will be available soon after. Okay, so I've got my locators. Just a couple nitpicky things I do uh, to, to wrap up here is I want to color code each one of my songs so it's really easy to see. So I'm just gonna change the color on these. You don't have to do this, but to me, uh, it makes it really easy just to, to see. So I'm gonna pick colors that uh, I like to see, kind of a baby poop uh, brown color, which, you know, maybe it does it for you, maybe it doesn't. But uh, that's what I'm going to use here. And we're gonna apply the same baby poop brown. Oh, that's a little more fall. Let's do baby poop, there we go. Okay, um, let's do this last one. So we're gonna select this, go to the end here, and we'll do kind of a Florida color. All right, and then assign track color to group. Okay, uh, last one. So let's select this guy. We'll select all of these since that's not grouped. And what do we wanna do for this? We'll do this kind of this pinkish color then we'll apply it here. So to me, I really like that because it just allows me to see the songs individually, right? It, it makes it really simple to know here's song one, two, three, and four. Here's everything that's related to those. I could press one to go to song one, two, three, four. I could use my MIDI controller to press play and it's gonna start on that song. I could use next on my MIDI controller to navigate through locators, press previous to repeat, basically with like a one button repeat, which is really, really cool. Um, and then from there, what I would do is go in and make my transitions happen in my set. I could leave it set just like this, but this is one of the reasons why um, I don't like building a master set. I like every time as much as possible, as long as time permits, to build a, a specific Ableton file for that specific set so that I could get really intentional about my transitions, which is really, really great. Now, the final thing, I, I, I honestly, it's been a long day, so I can't remember if I showed you this or not, but the final thing I wanna show you is my audio routing. So um, all my audio routing is already done, right? It's already done because I did that per song. So no matter what set I drop this into, my audio routing's done. Um, I just have my routing, uh, my output set to go to my ATEM so that you can hear this. But if I show you my return tracks, you can see these are already set up for 12 outputs. So I can plug my Play Audio 12 in and be ready to go. Um, this is the way to do it. So if you're looking to run tracks in Ableton Live and you're a worship leader, uh, I think you should head to from studiotostage.com slash worship so that you can see that full over my shoulder look where you can watch and build a set from scratch. But you can also take all of our tracks courses, um, use the basic tracks template that I use to format this and follow along completely in the process. But if that's not for you, you're, 
you're, you're not ready to commit, uh, you don't have the financial resources to commit yet, head to from studio to stage.com slash template to download my free template. It doesn't have everything that you see here, but it's gonna get you started in a way that allows you to use tracks that's uh, uh, flexible, gives you freedom, it's efficient, and it's stable. So again, if you wanna subscribe from studiosage.com slash worship uh, to see all the content we have there and to subscribe. Uh, and then if you wanna get the free template, head to from studiosage.com slash template. Thanks so much for watching everyone. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.